Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be covering how to use the Elementor Pro Gallery widget. So before we dive in, I just wanted to say, if you don't already have Elementor Pro, I highly recommend picking it up. If you want to support my channel and pick it up, you can get it at WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. I also wanted to mention that I'll be covering every single one of the Elementor Pro elements in these videos and making a big playlist for you to be able to watch. So subscribe if you want to see more of those videos. And with that out of the way, let's dive into this video. So the Pro Gallery element is a great way to display various types of images in different formats on your website. So the first thing that we're going to do is within Elementor Pro, we're going to just click new section here. And I'm just going to make a section and I'll hit plus to add it. And I'll go over to the left side under Pro and find Gallery. Now there is a basic gallery as well. If we scroll down, we're going to be able to see that in the general settings right here, this basic gallery. I am going to be using the pro one. Now we can drag it over here and just drop it in. And then we're going to have this area that says type single and you can choose multiple. I'm just going to use single in this case, but here we're going to be able to add images. So I'm just going to hit plus on this add images section. And what I'm going to do is select various images for the site. So I just loaded up some images of fall and winter and even a few from the beach for summertime. And I'm just going to add those in right now. And once I've selected the ones that I want, I can hit create new gallery. And from here, you're going to have an option to add captions if you want, or you can actually drag and reorder them and reposition them. So click, hold and drag to do that. And if you find a nice order that you like, I'm just going to put this one first for this example. You can then go and save it and click insert gallery right here. Now each of the images that I used are 1000 by 1000 pixels and I added 16 so it looks nice on this gallery. I had this even number here. But what you can do here is you can change the number of columns. So right here it says four. If you wanted to change it to two, it would also fit pretty well. But you see that we lose some of our image quality here when we do that. So let's go down here and change this image quality to be large. We'll make it a better quality image. You can see right there that the quality of the images is much nicer when you make it larger on the image size right here. So let's go and make this four again just to make it a little smaller and easier to see what's going on. And from here you can also change the layout format. So right now we have it as grid. If we wanted to we can have justified and justified means that the image width can be different but the heights will remain the same. So all these images are the same by default, but you see right here that the height on this row is all the same, but the width could be different if we wanted to have it that way with different size images within this gallery. Then we also have masonry, which is great for when you have a lot of different size images and you don't want to reload them. So the masonry makes our images fit despite the different aspect ratios that we have going on. So you can add all different size images when you're using masonry. I'm just going to use grid because by default my images fit well with grid since they're all the same size anyway. So I also wanted to point out right here we have lazy load and I have it enabled as yes. So this is something that you might want to enable because it's going to help your website load a little bit faster when it's loading all these different images and have better performance overall and probably a better user experience as well. So if we scroll down here we can see it says spacing. I'm just going to adjust the spacing. So right now it says 10 pixels. That's what's between each of these images. If we were to adjust that, you can see it get larger right here. If we went to 50 like that, and let's just make it five in this case. And I'm going to have it be this small width between each of the images. So right here, it says link media file. You can also choose none right here if you don't want it to go anywhere. So if you were to hover over it, you're not going to be able to have it go anywhere. If you want, it goes to media file. Actually, I might leave it as this because if you click on media file, it comes up as a light box right here and shows you the full image and what it looks like. And then you can scroll through this in this gallery from image to image. So I think media is a good option. So after we get out of that, we can actually right click edit gallery to get back into it. And over here, the other option is a custom URL if you want to have the image go to a specific link. So let's just say you're selling something within your gallery, maybe a bunch of different products or something like that, and you want to link to the product checkout page, this is where you'd use a custom URL. In this case, I'm going to leave it as media file. And I'm going to just go over to where it says overlay now, since we already covered the image size and how that can affect the quality. 
So right here it says background, yes. And if you hover over it, you see it gets darker in this background. If we wanted to have that as no, it's going to reload. And when you hover over it, you don't really see any effect go into place here. So I think it's good to have this in effect just because people know where they're hovering over and that they're hovering over the correct image when they have the mouse mousing over different parts of your website within this image gallery. So we can also go down here and have title. Right now it's set to none, but if we wanted to, we can add title. And I actually don't think any of these images have a title, but there we go. It says palm trees, fall path. So it does have titles, fall lake. And you can add those right here. And you can also add descriptions as well. You can add alternative text, the captions that you could have put in when we were first adding them in this section right here in the settings section. You could have added a caption when you're entering them, and that is where that could be displayed right here. So you can choose how it's displayed. If you want, you can have it go over and hover and show what the image is actually about. So this gives you an idea of what that will look like. If we navigate on over to the style tab, we're going to have some more options in terms of styling. So within here, you can actually change the border color and add a border. So right now the border is nothing and we're going to make it just go into effect. Let's make it two so we can see it. We said it has this reddish pinkish kind of color there. Let's go to where it says border color. And let's go and make it nice and light gray. You can see the color changed around each of the images when we did that. And if we want to, we can go and change the border radius right here. I'm actually going to leave this as is for now, but I'll just show you it will make the corners different on each of these images. So let's make it 40. And you can see that these corners have this different effect. But I wanted to go and do something else with that. So I'm going to show you that in a minute. First, let's go into CSS filters. If we go in here, we can change things like the saturation. So let's say you want black and white images. You can go right here and make this zero for saturation and it will make your images black and white. And then if we wanted to change that over in the hover section, we can actually make the color show up once we go and hover over the image. So that's a pretty cool effect right there. I'm going to go and make this CSS saturation go back to 100 and I'm just going to leave it as is with 100 put in place here. So if we go over here, we also have options for hover animation and you can choose what happens when you hover over. So let's just say you want it to move up. You can do that. You see right there, it goes up. Once we hover over it, the image just slides up. That's an example. I'm not going to go through each of them, but you see what it does and you can adjust the time it takes for that hover animation to go into effect here. So if we went over to the hover tab, here's where you could change some things. So Right here, let's change the border radius to be 20. So when we hover over it, the image is a rectangle right now. When we hover over it, it gives even more of an effect because it brings those corners and it curves them. So someone knows that they're hovering over the image that they're hovering on within your gallery here. So you can also change the color right here for the border color if you want and use CSS filters here as well. So that is how you can make it go from black and white to basically being normal saturation or even brighter saturation so you have a big pop effect. So I'll just show you how to do that real quick. If we go into saturation, let's just make this one 120 and we'll go back over to where it says normal, not in the hover section. Go to CSS filters and let's make the saturation zero. So if we hover over it, we can see it has this bright effect when we hover over it. And all to do is go to hover and you can go to where it says overlay. So within overlay, if we go over to where it says hover, we can then change this color right here and make it less colorful, more transparent there. And if we hover over it, you can see what it looks like and it doesn't have that gray tint over the image now. So that's how you would change that. I'm actually going to go and just put this back to probably a more normal place. I don't know exactly where it was, but I could go into the history here if I wanted to change it. And from here, I'm also going to just go back to image. I'll go to CSS filters and I'm going to make this saturation 100 to go back into effect so it looks pretty normal now. So that is how we would do that. And if you hover over it, you see that now the effect goes into play here where it does have a slight darker color and the corners go in just like we had before. And something we can also do is go over to overlay again and you can go into the classic area within the paintbrush and change different things. So right here it says blend mode normal. You can change the blend modes as needed here and change it for hovering as well. And it's going to make a different effect on your image. And then you can also change the animation for when you hover as well. Within the hover animation, you have some options here and you can slide it in or 
zoom in, zoom out, fade out. You can actually do all different kinds of things within this section. So there's lots of different options that you have with this builder here within the gallery section in particular. So I hope that you enjoyed this video on the Elementor Pro Gallery widget. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Elementor tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.